What's going on, guys? Dan Constantino and Nelly D from Life on the Dirt Circuit here, live via Zoom. <laughs> Our first Zoom call together. Our first Zoom call together. We're doing a little podcast tonight because I didn't want to drive 30 minutes across town and meet Nelly. <laughs> so we figured, why not, man? It's technology, baby. It's 2022. That's so, right. Uh, now, getting this on YouTube is going to be its own challenge. Yeah, so we got to figure out how to do all that. So um, anyway, so we're here, you know. Uh, the dirt circuit or half half of the dirt circuit qualified this year for a USGA event, which is very, very difficult to do. There's it's basically the, the USGA mid am um, that was played at Aaron Hills, Wisconsin. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal golf course. And I just thought what what better thing to do is to is to kind of ask Nelly some questions about his overall experience, um, you know, from qualifying here locally um, to to making it you know, up to Aaron Hills with, you know, I think there was what, 250 some odd players that made it um, out of 5,800. Um, so it, it was pretty phenomenal. So uh, yeah, Nelson, I have some questions for you, my man, but you know. Let's dive in. You know, it's crazy. I'm glad you're doing this because like when I qualified, I was trying to look up anything about the experience of a USGA event and I could find nothing on YouTube, right. on Google, nothing. So hopefully maybe this will help you know, some people at least just be cool to know. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why we're, we're doing this guys is, you know, a lot of times you go play a golf course. What do you, what's the first thing you do? You jump on YouTube, you look up videos of the golf course. You kind of want to see, you know, some experience and stuff, but yeah, all the different USG events that are out there, you know, you're going to have firsthand knowledge as to, you know, what was it all about and, and the experience that Nelson had, and it'll make you get fired up, man, to, to want to, to want to try to qualify for a USG event. So, um, First thing, man, I, I just put here, um, you know, did you feel pressure when when uh, when playing? And I guess it could be the the qualifier, even even up there, you know. And I put why because of the support back home, or or to disappoint your dad because he was caddying for you. But what kind of pressure did you feel versus like you know just playing in, in, in everyday events, you know, here locally? Yeah, great question. So qualifying is a grind in general, and the guy that caddied for me, a guy named Daniel Carver. I had like probably top five worst range sessions I've ever had. And he was kind of looking at me like, well, we didn't lose any range balls. The range is like 200 yards wide. And I'm like, yeah, that's one good thing. Then I went out and shot five under and got in. And so golf's such a funny game. But yeah, when you're there, it certainly was pressure. That was the first like real big event my dad had caddied for me. Right. But, um, so here, here's where the pressure comes. Like number one, you know, you guys have seen my swing on the channel. I, I don't have like a textbook golf swing, right? I picked up golf kind of late in life, but and you just kind of ask the question, like, do I belong here? You know, am I, am I supposed to be here? And most tournaments you play in, people don't really know until, you know, after you finish how you did, but this one, like everyone knew that I was going there. So you can scoreboard watch, you can do all that type of stuff. And uh, yeah, it was nervous, especially because one of the guys I played with in the practice round, who I thought had a great swing. I checked the scores in the morning. He was like 13 over through six holes. And I was like, oh, dear God, don't let that happen to me. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely some more pressure. Well, speaking of, of range balls, you mentioned that. Um, you told me a funny story about, about the range ball. So Nelson sends me a video up at the USGA event at Aaron Hills, and he's on the driving range, and they have like tour stamp golf balls, brand new Pro V1s or Pro V1Xs. And I thought it was the funniest thing. And the first thing to my, that came to my mind was the Tin Cup movie where he's like, you know, how are we going to steal enough golf balls to pay for this fiasco, right? So I'm thinking, oh man, I'm definitely going to take some of those balls. So tell me what happened up there, Nelson. Yeah, so our second round, it's raining on the driving range. And, uh, you know, you see like Tiger Woods caddy is famous for this. When Tiger's hitting driver, he always tosses him a ball and he catches it, puts it on a tee, right? So my dad was doing that and uh, secretly sneaking some, you know, in the in the bag uh, because it's just so, so different. But then uh, I told him it was his fault for doing that because that was my second round. I proceeded to make triple on my first hole from the dead center of the fairway. So thanks, Pops. But uh, that, I'm just kidding. that had nothing to do with it, but. No, that's too yeah, funny. So pig, piggybacking on that, you know, what was the overall experience like? I, I wrote some stuff down, like the hotel, the practice round experience, the food, yeah. the events that they put on. Just tell me how the whole experience, man, just so, kind of came Yeah, it's like when you qualify, I actually have this right here in my office. Like they give you this, this sheet, right? And you see this QR code 
it just says like congrats on qualifying and then you scan that QR code and it goes to your player registration. So you fill out your profile and, you know, everything you, you would want the media to kind of say about you, things like that. Um, hometown that would be up on the screen. When did you start playing golf? What are your best golf accomplishments? All that type of stuff. That list was pretty short for me. Um, but uh, Greenville County Amateur, Spartanburg County Amateur, a couple of dirt <laughs> circuit events, uh, fourth flight, whatever. That's, that's more than uh, I've had, my friend. So you, you, but, did, you did all right. Yeah, but the, the practice rounds are really cool. So once you get all the registration stuff in, they sent you the link to the host hotel. And then there was a link for practice rounds. So basically you go on, you just select and you see all the tee times available and you just sign up for one. And I thought that was one of the coolest parts of the experience was playing with guys from not just all over the country, but all over the world. Uh, like I played with a guy who was a fireman from Canada, absolutely hammered the ball. It was awesome to watch. Really? Uh, and I played with a guy from Texas who hit like low wind cheaters because he's used to playing in the Texas wind. Um, played with two guys that were friends that played at Ohio State, another guy from Russia who played at Duke. Um, so that was a really cool experience. And especially like when I played the practice round, I booked morning rounds both days. So the course hadn't been touched for a week they stop member play a week prior. So when you're playing the practice round, it's, it's literally perfect conditions. Mm. Um, and they had a, a couple of events for you. I mean, there's breakfast and lunch included every day at the course. Um, they rented out the Harley Davidson museum in downtown Milwaukee for us one night, brought in barbecue, some uh, prime rib. It was just a cool experience. And they had another barbecue at, uh, at Aaron Hills one night. So yeah, overall, like it, um, it was just a phenomenal experience. I mean, definitely the most nerve wracking first tee shot I've ever hit uh, on the tournament day, because right when I'm finishing up putting, um, there's a guy talking to my dad and we're about to go to the first tee. I'm feeling pretty good. And he's looking in my bag at stuff and he's, I'm like, Hey, what are you, what are you doing? And he was like, well, I want to know what type of clubs you play, you know, for like sponsorships or media, whatever. And I'm like, that's when I was like, Holy crap, this, this is different. Um, you know, like you and I played in a tournament together where a guy asked on the first tee, like, can I use grease? You know, this was very, very far from that. I know. Um, you, you know, it's funny. I played in the SCGA qualifier one time and and on the first tee, there was like four people there and the guy announced my name and I literally was like shaking. So I couldn't imagine being at a USGA event. I saw the photos you had, just just the uh, all the people around and just like you said, the, the leaderboards and different things going on. Um, it definitely would be, uh, I'm surprised, you know, you made contact with the, with the ball, but, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's phenomenal. even on the first tee, Dan, like I made contact, striped it down the middle, hit a wedge to eight feet and then missed it. Right. But what I'll say about the course setup, um, I've never played greens that firm, like blue mound was only, it's a Seth Rayner design. If anyone's a golf course designer nerd, um, it's only 6,700 yards, par 70. But it, like I had a scenario, I was in the rough, but I had a great lie in the rough, 100 yards to the pin. I landed at pin high and it proceeded to roll 40 feet off the back of a green, of a green slope and back to front. So like I had just never played in, in stuff that severe before, but it's, I, I liked it because you had to use different parts of your golf like mentality and a good shot may not be going anywhere near the pin, you know, right. um, which I thought was really cool. Well, it's funny you say that because I was going to ask you, you know, how hard were the were the were the courses compared to what you play in Greenville, South Carolina? Or, I mean, you played some really nice courses all around, but you know, that's one thing. I, you, I, you know, when you told me about the firm conditions, and you said Aaron Hills wasn't as bad, but you know, um, you have to get used to landing it way short of the green and different things like that. So, I mean, when you're in the rough, and I saw some of those photos, it's like, man, that rough is deep, and the the fairways looked, you know, very tight fairways um you know so tell me kind of the experience with that and type of shots that you had to hit you know with those so, <laughs> this will be funny so those of you like who've watched our content I got two two clubs in the bag that are pretty much money and that's the only reason I can score well my driver and my 60 degree so I get on the range and I'm warming up with 60 I'm like I'll be war you know loose with this I'm like laying sod over the ball like I can't get used to how tight the conditions are like, I just couldn't figure it out. I had to use the bounce a little differently and then I, I figured it out, but yeah, it, it's night and day difference. Like I watched a guy, I played with a guy that played in three PGA tour events, um, got his amateur status back, whatever. But I watched him putt one 
that was going into a bunker, but a sprinkler had stopped it from like 15 feet. Yeah. And so it was, it was very difficult. Now the guys that scored low, they went out on the morning wave on both courses. It was kind of benign, but then we had a massive rain delay on day two and played. If you played in the afternoon, the first day that cold front kind of came in, it got pretty windy. I mean, it, it was just a, it was a tough test. Like par is your friend out there, obviously. Cause I mean, three over got into, uh, got into match play and, I mean, I, I made mean, at Aaron Hills, it's long. Yeah, but it was a little bit softer. Like I played it in pretty scorable conditions, even though it added length to it. But like the first time I made a triple from dead center of the fairway from 160 yards, because it's because I fanned an eight iron a little bit right. And it was in that fescue stuff. Um, right. That's what I'm saying. You, you have one bad swing and now you're in some high stuff and, and, and it's really hard to get out of and the greens are firm. So, I mean, I think, you know, and, and I'm obviously looking back on it now, you know, you got to look at it a different way. It's almost like uh, this guy told me one time on rainy conditions, he just tries to hit the center of the greens and try to two putt and get out of there because he knows it's going to be tough and people aren't going to make a bunch of birdies. I mean, did you have that mentality or were you thinking a number? Okay, I got to I got to try to make birdies. Or did you just say, hey, let's just hit it to the center of the greens, man? Well, after I played my practice round at Aaron Hills, my first round was at Blue Mound. I'm thinking I got to light this place up because there ain't a lot of birdies at Aaron Hills. But People played well there because they adjusted the course because of rain. It was still playing 7,400, par 71, but still. Um, yeah, I just – I three-putted on my second hole and putted really just kind of tentative. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, after at, – at Aaron Hills, um, I mean, after that triple, I played the next 16 holes one under and was right there. And I had to make a hole-in-one on my last hole to qualify. But Aaron Hills has the hardest par three I've ever played in my life by far number, um, nine, number nine it is 130 yards 138 yards right um they there are signs all over the place that say it's the shortest par five in wisconsin and i told my dad i was like i could hit the safe shot here long left and try to make a 30 footer but i'm like i have to try to make a hole in one so i hit gap wedge that landed probably eight to ten feet pin high on the green and then started trickling and rolled into a bunker hmm. Then they went into another bunker. Then it went back into another bunker. And yeah, it led to a triple, but I was already out of it by then. So but, let me ask you this. The, yeah. I, I watched, um, obviously you going up there, I started Googling stuff too, right? So I watched, um, I think it was the 2017, was it US Open they played there? Yeah. Right. So I watched uh, JT play his round. I think he shot 63, right? Yeah. Um, he had a birdie on number nine, actually. He hit it just past the pin, but the pin was, was middle left. Um, yep. and then I saw Brooks Kepka's all his shots, you know, and it looked like he hit a lot of just, center of the green type stuff, you know, he made a few bombs and, and that was it. But so what, you know, when you, when you look at like really good golfers, you, you know, you're an awesome golfer. You look at all these guys that are playing, you know, then you see like that round that JT did. I mean, how do you compare like, you know, good amateur golfers to a professional golfer, you know, with, with what he did? I mean, what, what, were the, what was the difference you think? So I played, um, one of the guys I played with is a, a top mid amateur. Like he's about to play in the crump cup at Pine Valley. If people know that. He won the Gasparilla last year. So, I mean, solid player. Right. Well, on 18, 18 is a 663-yard par five. And if you watch the highlights of Justin Thomas, he hits a three-wood from 299 to cover and makes eagle on 18. And there's a plaque in the fairway from where he hit it. And we all walked and looked over there. And, like, it's an, it tight fairways, elevated green that slopes away from him. And long, it just runs down like 40 yards, death, shorts dead. And I looked at the shot and I'm like, if I had a teed up driver, I wouldn't be able to hit the shot. Right. And he hit three wood under that type of pressure and made eagle. It just, they just play a different game. Um, right. I mean, now there are guys, you know, based on where some of them hit it and where we honestly, like a lot of the guys we played with, I think myself included, would probably be average, maybe lower end of average of distance on the PGA Tour. But then the guys that bomb it, like DJ or, you know, Kepka, um, I mentioned all the guys on the Live Tour. <laughs> um, who yeah. else? Who's on the PGA Tour anymore? Uh, right. Anyway, so some of those guys, like Justin Thomas, you know, they have an extra gear. And um, and they played it. Now, they played it a par 72, but they played it longer than we did. But, I mean, 63 is just not on that golf course. It's just not. Yeah, it's it blows my mind, man. When 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 you told me your experience, and then I watched him 
shoot that 63. It was, it was pretty impressive, but uh, some of those tee ball tee shots out there just looking, just look awesome. But I mean, you could easily get in trouble out there, but I, I just love the way that the, the fairways were, were shaped um, with the way the, the rough and the, in the tight fairways, it kind of like, it's almost like when you play out in Arizona where it's got the contrast, you know, I thought yeah. that was kind of cool and stuff, but uh, anyway, so let me ask you this. So speaking of that, were you, were you intimidated at all by any of the, the other good golfers that were there? Um, obviously there's 260 some odd golfers there and, and they're all good because they qualified. Um, yeah. But how, how like, did you feel watching them on the range? And, and did you kind of have an air about you where you had to have a little bit of cockiness, I guess? Quite the opposite. Uh, and I guess part of it was just being my first USGA event. I'm like, there's a good chance I could be the worst player here. You know, I mean, I'm, I got two kids. I got a third coming, you know, it's, it's not like, like Stuart Hagestad. I watched his final hole before I teed off. He's a professional amateur golfer. I don't know what he does work, but I mean, he just posted something on Instagram. He shot a 59 at LA country club yesterday. Um, and I mean, these guys are good players, but you know, playing with them and playing in the round, like I did not have my best stuff and I was nowhere near the bottom. I think I was like a hundred and something with two triple, like I shot 76 at Aaron Hills with two triples. And I'm like, you know, yeah, there are guys that hit some more impressive shots than me, but I can still wedge it. And I hit my driver really good. Um, and so I think if I got back there, I'd have a lot more confidence in what I had, you know, right. Know, right. Um, I think it's just a natural feeling of like, you know, it's probably these college guys when they go from college to playing in their first tour event, a lot of times they, they suck and then they get used to it, you know? Well, I mean, are you, were you, I mean, that, that was a, a long trip for you. I mean, you went up there, you played practice rounds. I mean, you flew up there, you had a rain delays one day, got washed out, you know, mm -hmm. you had to stretch it out to Monday. That's a long week, right. To not make match play. So, I mean, were you disappointed? <laughs> no, yeah, I was, but I'll tell you, I was really proud of like how I fought back because making a triple the first hole at Aaron Hills, it's 56 degrees soaking wet. That could have been an 86 or a 90 in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. But fought all the way back, had some good chances. My dad, my dad and I had one disagreement. You'll find this kind of funny. So we got three holes to play. I'm thinking I, I'm I'm two over on the day at this tournament, five or uh on the day, five over for the tournament. I need to birdie two of the last three. So I'm on seven, a par five. It's like 560. I'm in the rough, but it's sitting up. And my dad's looking at it, shooting yardages for layups and stuff. And I grab driver. Uh, and he's like, well, what are you doing? And they, right. they, there are marshals there, ball spotters, you know, that are listening to our conversation. They had to be cracking up. And I'm like, it's sitting up. I think I can hit driver off the deck and knock it on the green. He goes, you don't need an eagle. Just lay up up there and hit, use your wedge and, you know, try to make birdie. And I'm like, I got to make something happen. Uh, and I was like, well, what about three wood? I got 265 to cover the bunker. That's probably going to jump 290 to the front. I, I can hit this. And he was like, just hit the five iron. So I hit the five iron, knocked it on the green, it spun back a million yards and made par. But it was just kind of funny, the banter going back and forth. Well, speaking or, of that, speaking of that, you think about when just saying that story reminds me of Tin Cup and, and the, uh, oh, yeah. I forgot the guy's cat, the caddy in that movie. Romeo. Cheech, Cheech Romeo, Cheech Marin. Man, that was funny just listening to him. And, and then he, you know, he, he snapped all his clubs, but that was hilarious. But anyway, um, so what was it like having your dad caddy for you? You know, I'm sure he was probably more nervous than you. Bro, well, that now, like top father-son experience we've ever had. Um, right. I'll never forget. So I played the practice round at Blue Mound, and then he flew in that afternoon, uh, had some work stuff, and then was there with me, the practice round at Aaron Hills, and he was going to be there as long as I went. And I'll never, I'll, I'll hold this memory in my mind because like, I, I was amazed at how good the course condition was when he got out of the Uber and we walked around the clubhouse at Blue Mound and he was just looking around like, where am I? <laughs> you know, it's like we're walking around in a painting. Uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Listen, man, I saw some of those pictures on the range and just like the, the chipping area and stuff. And the sign said players and caddies only. It was, it's just had yeah. to hear about it. But I've played some really nice golf courses with you in Western North Carolina, and and that mm -hmm. that place looked like it was just incredible. Um, it was good. The communication and everything was really good. And I guess the point for the guys watching, like number one, I think if you could take away anything other than just like entertainment, knowing what a USGA event is like, right? Anybody can get hot for one round, so don't hesitate to play in tournaments. Like try to get in qualifiers. Try to get in certain things. Like there were a lot of good players in the qualifier that I was at. 
And I did, I don't like that golf course particularly right. well. Um, but again, any given day, um, same thing would, if you get to match play, anything can happen, you know? And, oh uh, God, I wanted you to get a match play so, so bad because you're just so good at match play and you just get, get under people's skins when you, you know, skin, when you make, when you make putts and the way you chip and stuff and your wedge play is so good. You know, we did a video back and you were hitting a wedge shot and you said, I, I, I paid $159 for this bounce. I'm going to show you how to use it. And just that I'll, I'll never forget that it always, always makes me laugh. Um, but you would have said that if you saw me hit rage balls at Blue Mound and I'm laying sod over it. <laughs> It's like it's like Ted Cup, man. He's like he's shooting chili peppers, peppers up Lee Jansen's ass. Uh, yeah. Are you? But I put here. Are you? Are you more motivated now um, to qualify for another USJ event? I'll tell you this. I'll be fifty this year. God, I want to try to qualify now because see, here in your experience and just the well, everything you showed me, I'm like, oh my God, I got to try to try to qualify for something, you know. But so the year, night I qualified. A buddy of mine named Christian Cease. I don't know if I called him or he called me. Anyway, we were on the phone. He made it to the final eight the year before. And he's right. won the Carolinas and before, unbelievable player. And he told me, he goes, get ready for the best golf experience of your life. And I was like, all right, that's saying something. And yeah, I'm definitely motivated to get back. Uh, I wish Stephanie could have gone with me right. because, I mean, she's very pregnant. We got a baby coming very soon. But right. like next year, it's at Sleepy Hollow in New York and also in the sister courses, Fenway uh, golf club. Like I would love to get back and, and play there. Um, but yeah, it definitely gives you an itch, but I think more than anything, it was like, Hey, you know, I may not be as good as some of these guys, but I belong here. I can play with, with any of them. Um, right. So that, that was really good for confidence sake, but now, you know, kid number three coming, how long can I maintain this last? I mean, my first win in a three day event was a year ago. Um, I mean, I, I just I don't know how long I can maintain, you know, this level. Well, of golf. I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll say this: I love golf. I played forty two years, and I love tournament golf. I do amateur golf stuff. SEG. I'm going to play in the Carolinas or the uh, Mid Am down in Data Island, but I definitely want to try to go after some USGA stuff because it's like a different world, man. And not yeah. even the like you said, not even the competition, but just you know, and I and I don't. I don't know if it's true or not, but they say, you know, you, when you get into that, that environment, you just, you, you play better, you know, and I know you always yeah. tell me play with better players and you're going to, you're going to get better. But when, when uh, I've been in the heated bat battle sometimes, you know, in some of these tournaments, even Spartanburg County last year, it's, you, you definitely start to focus a little bit more and you, and you, and you, you know, you, you get more serious when you're playing those kind of events, but you know, I can't wait to try to qualify this year for some USGA stuff. And I know you're going to, you're going to continue to do it. I know you tried to qualify for the four ball um, and you guys didn't, didn't fare real well. Of course you drove what eight, nine hours up there. And then wasn't there a delay there too, a rain delay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Four hours. It never rained a drop. And then it downpoured and we had to come back the next day and play in it. Right. Um, right. So yeah, it, it, you know, top experience for sure. I encourage everyone to try to qualify you include like you could definitely get in like one day, Right. You have one days that are just, you know, mind blowing. Uh, right. I would have loved to see you put on those greens running about a 13. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, I was just talking to uh, to a guy here in Greenville and he was saying Kevin Kisner down at Palmetto Club. They, they, they sped the greens up to like 13 just so he could practice on it uh, for uh, for the President's Cup. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, that's what they do. Now, guys, let me tell you this. I'm a viewer. I, I'm going to I'm gonna end this with a rant, okay? Damn it, you didn't ask me this question. I went playing on this, but I'm going to. So yeah. I was going to film my entire practice round at Aaron Hills from tee shot, you know, just to see, like, hey, what could I shoot so that you guys could see, like, how hard it's playing. Right. <laughs> the problem with these big tournaments, all these jagaloons, they're hitting a million chip shots mm. and putts. I remember my dad asked me, he goes, you want to chip one from over there where those guys are? I'm like, if I'm over there, I got bigger problems. I'm not like, it was a 300 yard par four, a drivable one. And they're hitting from like the spot you would never be in. And you're assuming two things. You're assuming where the pin's going to be because they didn't let you know. And they're assuming where you might be. And you're right. not going to remember what the stupid putt does. I you know. Just playing your own ball and seeing how, you know, what your tendencies are. Are you pulling it or pushing it? That part was really annoying. Um, 
Right, but people just, like like right prepping prepping for a big tournament, man. You got all these guys; they're all tour jocks, man. They get out there, they no. play for a USJ event. You know, they're going to take advantage of of, of every time. I mean, they're going to play as many shots and practice and and do whatever they're going to do. Like I'm at Aaron Hills, my dad's filming and stuff, and I'm about to putt my birdie putt on a 500 yard par four to start, and I hear this like sizzling spinner chip come like right across my face. I'm like, what the crap are these guys doing? But Anyway, that was the guy that ended up shooting a million. Uh, yeah, that was funny because when I looked at the the live score scoring, you know, you know, that's one thing too, man. Like all the pressure you probably had from everybody back in Greenville looking at the USGA thing because I shared it with with all my friends, you know, all all eight sure. of them. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but they they were we were we were all rooting for you, man. And and uh, it 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 sucks when I when I when I went on there and saw. Well, for one, I went on there and, and there was no scores. I'm like, what's going on? I looked at the weather and it said it was sunny up there. So it, it didn't make sense to me. But you you teed off late the second day, too. And then I saw your first hole. It was a triple bogey. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, you the know? second round? Yeah. And I was oh, like, oh, gosh. You wait a whole day to get going and then. Oh, I know. And then, and, but but then I looked I looked again. It's like par par. Then you made a birdie. It's like, oh, my God, he's clawing his way back here. Um, You know, so uh, but yeah. That's usually how I start a, a tournament round. You know, I'll start off three or four over after two holes, and then I, I always have to claw my way back. So, um, well, anyway, you, but are you amateur tournament players? I'm going to tell you the best part close to this. Um, yeah. You walk to the first tee, you're in a tournament. What does what the guy up there ask you? Uh, can one of you guys volunteer to take care of the golf genius, please? And you're just kind of looking around like, uh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, you know. <laughs> so you I walk up that. there and – yeah, everyone's introduced themselves and hey i'm i'm dean i'm gonna be your scorer today and it's like oh thank god i don't have to worry about oh you, you had somebody put in the golf genius in for you that's phenomenal oh, yeah you had scores walking with you and everything it's pretty cool really? well listen yeah. man when you post this video why don't you put some put some photos man of the course and stuff maybe you can yeah i'm gonna see if i can in, infuse them into this video that'd be right. good that but. sounds awesome well, cool, man. Well, thanks for uh, giving us some insight uh, as to uh, what's it like to play in a USGA event. And uh, I think a lot of people will enjoy this video. So we appreciate yeah, guys, it. More well, content's coming. Dan's got a little sciatica he's battling with. He's going through a lot of pain so we can get content for you guys. But yes. coming soon. We'll yep. see you. We'll see you all later.